the protection of journalists in Europe, hate speech, disinformation and the role of platforms. We will first hear from the rapporteur. Four minutes. Madam Commissioner, Madam President and uh, Madam Commissioner, I uh, would like to congratulate you on your new position. We've always believed that the EU will protect democracy. It's not the case. We've always believed that our law and our memory about millions of war victims will protect us from authoritarian and nationalistic uh, regimes. It's not the case. We've always believed that democracy was resilient, that it won't give in to anti-democratic manipulations. It's not the case. It's actually very rare that uh, strong words about a lethal threat will be listened to because they are really true. But today they are true as they've never been. Today we are witnessing democracy being annulled. Any vote given out of hatred based on disinformation if, or lack of information, even if it's fairly counted, will never constitute a democratic vote. It may only be treated as its formal caricature. Today, with the help of lies and hatred, power is taken or taken over in many countries, including the EU. That's why now and here we have to speak very loudly and speak together as Europeans, as children of generations that died for their freedom, as voices of parents who want peace and prosperity for future generations. Media should serve the truth and not lies. Media should serve voters and knows not those who are being voted for. Media should serve to control uh, power, those who are in power, and not help them maintain power. That's why media must be independent. And when it's attacked and destroyed, we have to protect free media. Media should protect democracy, but media can also be used to kill democracy. Media can kill a human being. The decision which purpose media will take is influenced by whether or not they are independent. That's why anyone who treats democracy as an obstacle and not security against power abuse and an autocrat will be destroying at all price independent journalism. That's why we as Europeans, we should speak for media pluralism and independence. There is no freedom without media independence. There is no democracy be 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 without media pluralism. Excessive con media concentration, being, uh, being dependent on state money, being bought or taken over by oligarchs or state corporations should ring an alarm bell that media financing becomes a tool in elections, a tool of crime on democracy. That's why independence journalism, especially local and invest investigative, should find its rightful place in the multi-annual financial fr framework. That's why I call on you to create a permanent European fund of uh, direct financial support for independent journalists and media. We can't say there is no money to protect our democracy when there is plenty when it comes to destroying democracy. We have to protect independent, jour independent journalists. They are very often int intimidated. They are murdered here in the U EU. Unfortunately, in uh, disproportionately more often women journalists become victims of such attacks. We have to say no to silencing the voices of women. Protection of independence journal independent journalists should have its legal aspect. That's why I'm calling on the Commission to submit a legal act that will introduce across the EU minimum standards for the so-called SLAPS, strategic lawsuit against public participation. To conclude, if we fail to protect media freedom, the EU will fall and our democracy will fall, and it doesn't matter which will happen fa first. So I'm calling on anyone, irrespective of your political affiliation, who's not afraid of the control aspect of media, anyone who believes in the strength of arguments and not manipulation, anyone who does not want to come back to the murky times of nationalism and authoritarian regimes, anyone who believes in freedom, please support my report. Let's protect free European media. Let's protect our democracy. Thank you. Madam Rapporteur, we'll now give the floor to Commissioner McGuinness. Go ahead. 
Can I thank you um, for your very strong words uh, and very powerful presentation this evening and indeed your work uh, on this report. Um, and let me be very clear that media freedom and pluralism are enshrined in the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights. And I agree that democracy cannot work without a free and independent media. And it's more important than ever that journalists are able to do their job so that citizens have access to accurate information. So I really do appreciate this work and perhaps as a former journalist, I appreciate the depth of your comments this evening. The Commission, as you know, is currently finalising a series of initiatives that will address many of the issues in this report. The safety of journalists is a top priority that we do intend to address. We have already announced an initiative against abusive litigation targeting journalists and rights defenders in our 2021 work programme. And this will be part of the European Democracy Action Plan, which the Commission will present on December the 2nd. As part of the first annual rule of law report, we analyse the framework for the protection of journalists in all member states. Alongside the independence of audiovisual regulatory authorities, transparency of media ownership, the political independence of media and state advertising in the media sector. The conclusion is that no member state is immune from the risks to media freedom and pluralism. This is also clear from the Media Pluralism Monitor, co-funded by the EU with the support of the European Parliament. We welcome the report's emphasis on the importance of media pluralism, media freedom and media literacy to fight disinformation. The Code of Practice on Disinformation for Online Platforms and the Advertising Sector is a good example of structured cooperation to ensure greater transparency and accountability. It's also a useful framework to monitor and improve platforms' policies on disinformation. The European Democracy Action Plan will outline the next steps to upgrade this code. This report also highlights the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on the media, especially local media, with estimated reduction in revenues of as much as 80%. To help the sector recover and support its digital transformation, the Commission will also present a media and audiovisual action plan on December the 2nd. We will also propose the Digital Service Act by the end of the year. This aims to harmonise a clear set of due diligence obligations for online platforms, including notice and action procedures, and voluntary proactive measures for illegal content, for illegal, excuse me, for illegal content such as illegal hate speech, redress mechanisms, accountability measures, and obligations to cooperate with public authorities. One of the main objectives of this instrument will be to improve the safety of users online across the European Union while improving the protection of their fundamental rights. The Digital Service Act will be adopted along with the Digital Markets Act, which aims to better address market deficiencies resulting from the position of large online platforms. The Commission will continue working with the European Parliament to strengthen media freedom and pluralism, as well as to fight hate speech and disinformation while protecting fundamental rights. This is essential for our democracy and the rule of law. I thank you for this report. Thank you, Mrs. McGuinness.